Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Time to delve back into the realm of fantasy and return to an existing series. Yes, ladies and gentle colts, we are revisiting Whisper the Winged Unicorn who looks like some pony else. So this time we are looking at Cry of the Wolf starring Whisper the Winged Unicorn. Story by Peter Mandel, illustrated by Katherine Wilson Heaney. You gotta love this. You have a winged unicorn and a wolf on the cover. And a wild cat in the recording studio. Whisper the winged unicorn was enjoying the fresh morning breeze. It was an exciting time of year. There were only two days until the Rainbow Forest Spring Fair. Dew sparkled on the tops of new flowers and a little bit of fog hung in the distance. Whisper felt that there was only one thing wrong. None of the other animals seemed to be awake. It's after nine o'clock, Whisper said to herself. What a shame. Okay. After nine o'clock. What, what? You were referring to yourself there? Because I, I can sleep past noon. Well, it's what's written. Also, she lives in a forest. How does she know hours of the clock? Yeah. How does she know hours of the clock? I don't see a wristwatch on there anywhere. Nope. Finally, Whisper saw Bixby the rabbit sitting on a tree stump. He was yawning and rubbing his eyes. Just barely, mumbled Bixby. Jonathan and I were shivering all night long. Shivering? said Whisper. But it was a beautiful spring night. We weren't shivering because we were cold, said Bixby, but because we were afraid. Didn't we deal with fear in the very first book? Maybe, but I also remember one about fear, which was the one about, um... Phineas. Phineas, yeah. The, uh... Nodkin. Nodkin. Also, the different name for him. That sounds... The morgue. Yes. That's the word I was looking for. Yes. I knew it had to do with something that sounded like death. Yeah. Which I think that's the only book they use that reference every other time they go, Phineas the Nodkin. The illustrations are very nice. Very colorful. Is this like the same artist from the last book when they changed things up to a different artist, or...? Oh, Christmas in Rainbow Forest was a different artist. So that's where we got the color change for Bixby and Jonathan. They went from being brown rabbits to being black and white rabbits. This illustrator did The Secret of Dark Hollow, and we think she also did the first book because that's Catherine L. Wilson and the other one say Catherine Wilson Heaney. Because so. mm. they look different than the last book, but they look familiar. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, Simon the Woodchuck popped his head out of the ground. I don't even feel safe in my burrow anymore, he cried. If I'm guessing based on the cover, it's a freaking wolf. Wolves can't get you in your den, you're, you, um... Woodchuck. And you woodchuck. a wolf could try to dig them out. Yeah, but they usually don't go for prey that way. They're, they're opportunistic. Because you don't want to spend more calories than you're going to take in from what you're hunting. No, that's a thing that only humans need to do. Jeremy the skunk, who was passing by, agreed. My whole family is frightened, he said. That cry is so scary. We haven't slept a wink for the past week. Wait a minute, everybody, shouted Whisper. Just what cry are you talking about? I've been so tired lately. I guess I've slept right through it. Also, she's bigger, so something of that nature may not frighten her as much. Yeah, though technically she's not a predator. Yeah. It sounds like this, said Jonathan, who had just joined the group. Wait a second, wasn't Jonathan just illustrated back a page ago with Bixby? Yeah, Bixby is shown in the log. Bixby and Jonathan are both in all the illustrations, so... All right, let's try this again. It sounds like this, said Jonathan, who had just joined the group. Ow! No, no, said Bixby, cupping his paws over his mouth. It's more like, broof! Broof! <laughs> uh, when you said, ow! I just remember this meme online. No, wooing aloud. I'm just reading it as it is written. Mm -hmm. Whatever it sounds like, said Simon, it's coming closer and closer each time. And tomorrow night is the Rainbow Forest Spring Fair. Perhaps, said Whisper, I ought to go and see Phineas. He'll know what to do. 
Please try something, Whisper, begged Simon. If we don't find out what's howling, all of Rainbow Forest will have to go on special alert. We'll have to keep watch all night, said Jeremy. We'll need campfires, said Jonathan. And whistles to warn each other, said Vixby. Um, okay. These are very sentient animals, you know, campfires and whistles. I'm guessing maybe they learned about this stuff from Phineas? Perhaps. Also, when did Whisper get flowers in her mane? Yeah, there's no flowers in any of the other shots. And it doesn't look like they're part of the tree. Hmm. By the way, the illustrations have been very consistent and very nice. Her mane's a little more curly in this one. Yeah, and she also has... I think those are called fetlocks, colored fetlocks. Yeah, the feathering. She's had that in a lot of them. Whisper flew off into the gentle blue sky. The fog had lifted, and she could see the valley spread beneath her. It was hard to believe that anything evil or frightening could be lurking nearby. But just as Whisper began to dip down towards Phineas's cave, she heard it. The terrible cry made her mane stand. <laughs> God damn it, Lux. It was great. It's just, it was right next to me. I was like, dude! <laughs> there was a reason I did the others so poorly. They were imitating. This is the actual creature. The terrible cry made her mane stand on end. As soon as Phineas saw Whisper, he knew something was wrong. You're shaking, he said. I think you'd better come inside. The morning air can be chilly. It's that cry, Phineas, said Whisper. Didn't you hear it? Indeed I did, answered Whisper's friend, and I'm afraid I know just where it came from. But first, there's one fact I'd like to look up in my library. Now she looks pretty happy for being frightened. Well, she's probably happy to see Phineas. True. Hmm, said Phineas, just as I thought. Whisper looked over Phineas's shoulder at a strange old book. The title was a single word printed in gold. Wolves. All caps, by the way. These are not just ordinary wolves, explained Phineas. They're timber wolves that have come from the far north. He can tell this based on the cry and looking at a book. Well, if the book describes how the howl is, or the cry is, cries are unique to each pack of wolves and so on and so forth. They could also be unique per species. I don't really know. I haven't really looked at any studies on wolves overall. Phineas took off his spectacles and looked at Whisper. There's only one thing to be done, and it must be done quickly. Make a friendship cake? Somehow I don't think baking is going to be the answer. Oh, nuts. We'd only need those if we were baking. Yes. Oh, that's a very similar illustration to the cover. Quite similar. Could be the exact same, in fact, except cropped for the cover. Pretty much. Whisper rose higher and higher on the night wind. The light of the moon sparkled on her outstretched wings. She thought of the secret mission Phineas had sent her on. Why does it need to be secret? Everyone's freaked out about the wolves. They just don't know that they're wolves. You must fly to the edge of Rainbow Forest, he had told Whisper. According to ancient lore, Phineas had said, you must find a gift that will please the timber wolves. Only then will they leave us in peace and let us enjoy our spring fair. I have no idea why when you said ancient lore, I rolled my eyes, but I did. Trope. Trope. It's very much a trope. Following the eerie sound of the wolf cries, Whisper found a place to land. She saw bright, silvery shapes all around her and pairs of fierce blue eyes. One of the timber wolves startled her by speaking. Its voice was low, but not really frightening. You must be Whisper, it said. I am Chieftain, leader of the timber wolves. We have heard the legend of a winged unicorn. Now we know you are real. His name's Chieftain. Yes. And he's the leader. Yes. And his name's Chieftain. Yes. And he's the leader. Yes. And his name's... Chieftain. That's very blunt. Yeah. Kind of like Jane and the Dragon, where the cook is named Pepper, 
and the gardener is named Drake. Please continue. Whisper was flattered, and suddenly she was no longer afraid. The glow from the moon made the timber wolves look beautiful. They're beautiful so they're not scary? There were big, strong males like Chieftain, and mothers with wolf cubs. I, mean, I can see, because I see a couple of wolf cubs playing around near their mother. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm assuming it's their mother. And then you have this guy just lolling his tongue, and you've got that one singing, and then you've got these two right here. Or howling. Howling is singing. Can be. If you're a wolf. I have come, explained Whisper, because the animals in Rainbow Forest are afraid of your howl. Are you afraid too? Asked Chieftain. Not anymore, she answered. I believe that you timber wolves howl because you are a little bit lonely. Um, no. It's their long distance phone calls. Frank, how are you? I'm fine. How are the kids? They're great. Also, there's a whole pack of them. How do you get lonely? You can get lonely in a group. Yes, but this implies that overall timber wolves are lonely because timber wolves are lonely creatures. As soon as she said that, Whisper had a wonderful idea. Uh-oh. Would you like to be our special guests at the Rainbow Forest Spring Fair? Whisper asked. Um, would you like to come to the buffet? We have plenty of rabbits, deers, skunks. Stay away from the skunks, they're a little bit bitter. Uh. Woodchucks, lots of birds. You like birds? Lots of middle. We would be honored, said Chieftain, his blue eyes flashing. That is a delightful gift, and we Timberwolves promise to be as quiet as mice. Also, the proportions on Whisper in that shot look way off. Her head's huge compared to the way they did her body. It's almost like they had it right, but then they squished her body to fit it in frame. Yeah, because I think they're trying to have her soar up above them and still keep the wolves and Whisper in the shot. Mm-hmm. That's probably one of the poorest illustrations we've seen from this illustrator. Oh, that's not necessary, said Whisper. Now that we know you mean no harm. Since Whisper didn't seem to mind, the timber wolves let out one last happy cry. Before, the sound had made Whisper shiver. Now it made her smile. The Rainbow Forest Spring Fair would go on as planned, and it would be the most exciting one ever. The end. I expected there to be more. You know, we would actually see the festival. No, because remember, we didn't get to see Phineas's entrance either. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed in this one. Well, they did the same thing in The Secret of Dark Hollow. Yeah. Hmm, was that the same author? Because we know it was the same illustrator. Was not the same author. Secret of Dark Hollow was Christopher Brown. And Cry of the Wolf is Peter Mandel. Hmm. So, what did you think? You have unicorns and wolves. In general, I would be happy with that. <laughs> so, but in specific? In specific, there's this scary noise. Send the magical creature to go check it out that we don't seem to have actually seen any magic from. We're assuming she's magical because she's a winged unicorn. But we have not actually seen her actively use magic. Hmm. Yeah. I don't think she's ever used magic so far. She's just flown a lot. Yes, but she has wings, so... Yep. That kind of implies. Also, just the fact that she met them for two seconds and she's no longer afraid. Yeah. It took her longer with Phineas, and Phineas was one person. This is an entire pack that could take you out in five seconds. Probably a little longer than that. But still. And this thing at the end where she's like, well, since Whisper didn't seem to mind, the timber wolves let out one last happy cry. The creatures of Rainbow Forest don't know it's okay yet, so you just freak them out all over again. And they're still going to be freaked out when suddenly the wolves walk into the fair. What do they do at this fair in the middle of the forest where Phineas is the only humanoid? Why do you even have a fair? How do you know what day to have the fair on? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I mean, this series isn't the strongest series of children books, but it seems to focus a lot on dealing with fear. Because we had fear of flying, fear of the unknown, fear of that which is different. Well, fear is a 
surprisingly a big part of kids' lives. Because you're pretty much afraid of everything until you know what's going on with it. And then sometimes that abates the fear. And other times it makes it worse. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, before my fear was irrational. Now I have reasons <laughs> behind it. <laughs> uh, I like the way you did that. I stole it from Mabel. Ah. The claymation episode. Ah. I remember that now. Yes. We talked about that in the Gravity Falls videos if you wanted to switch playlists after this. Trust us, we had fun. If you want to watch it and you haven't seen it yet, go to the Amazon links in our other videos. They're all there for every episode. Huh. And now that Lux is done plugging our other videos, I can do our closing. This has been Cry of the Wolf, starring Whisper the Winged Unicorn. Story by Peter Mandel, illustrated by Catherine Wilson Heaney. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please check out other entries in Ember's Reading Room. We're actually getting a lot of them. Uh, you can also check out our other videos. Um, we do cover things besides books, and we do cover things besides ponies. I know, strange, right? <laughs> Feel like shopping? Like this book? Want to get it? Uh, look below for an Amazon link. If it's in print, we'll try to provide one for you. If not, we'll provide you a link for shopping. Want to just go shopping in general? Check out the Ebates link. Sign up and get cash back for shopping at places you probably already shop with. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of this channel.